All right, next up, we've got Oregon and Washington. Man, obviously, game day is going to be there. ESPN going, taking their act to Seattle for this huge Pac-12 showdown. Uh, Washington, two and a half point home favorite, 67 being the uh, total uh, in this game. What a phenomenal matchup. Two terrific offenses, two under the rated, under underrated, I should say, under the radar, much improved defenses as well. Like Oregon has played really solid on the defensive side of the football this year. They've given up 10 or less in three straight games. I think Washington's defense is a lot better this year, but it also feels that as much as the defenses are better on these teams, it's going to come down to these two outstanding quarterbacks. And what a battle, Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. This is going to be a lot of fun to watch. And I think when you look at the numbers, the first thing you have to look at when you're handicapping Washington we know their passing game is number one in the country. Passing yards, uh, completion rate, 74% for Michael Penix Jr. He's been outstanding. But the secondary for Oregon, you know, fifth in terms of fewest passing yards allowed per game. Their secondary has been pretty good in terms of yardage. But then you look at complete uh, completion percentage, and Oregon's defense is only 76th in the country in opposing completion percentage for opposing quarterbacks. So that tells me that they haven't given up the big plays based on the yardage numbers, but they've been giving up a lot of completions and a lot of efficiency. And that's a stat that really stuck out to me. And it kind of worried me for Oregon in this game on the road against, obviously, I think one of the most accurate quarterbacks that we have right now in college football because Michael Penix Jr. is dropping dimes. Like he's fitting that ball in right where it needs to be to this terrific slew uh, of receivers that he has to work with here at Washington. Uh, although, you know, they have a couple that are question. Uh, Jalen McMillan's the big questionable one, but they've got a lot of depth there. Jalen Polk, Jeremy Bernard, uh, Rome, Romeo Dunze. Uh, these are all outstanding receivers here for uh, Washington. Uh, and I think, you know, that's going to be a big matchup uh, question here for Oregon. Well, yeah, they haven't given up a ton of pass yards, but they've given up a great deal of efficiency. Oregon, they're a run. They're more of a run offense than a pat. Although we know Bo Nix can throw the football too, but they also want the run game to be a big focal part of the offense. And you look at Washington here, 3.8 yards per carry allowed, you know, on defense against the run. 121.6 rushing yards per game. They've actually been worse against the pass. So there's there's some things in this matchup that kind of point me a little bit toward Washington. And I think I like, uh, I shouldn't say that, Dan Lanning's a terrific coach too, but I really like Kalen DeBoer. I really do. Home crowd might be just enough to push this toward Washington. It's below the key number of three. And look, this actually did open three, and I think there was just a small bit of money that came in on Oregon uh, earlier this morning. I'm. It's a tough game. These are two terrific teams, and either one is capable of winning this game. But I'm going to side with Washington a little bit here, as long as this stays below a field goal and what should be a great game. Uh, 67, don't want to bet it under with these two quarterbacks and these two offenses, but I don't know if I'll bet the over because I think these defenses, both of them, playing better this year, maybe a little bit better than people think. Uh, what do you think here, Connor, in what should be an outstanding Pac-12 clash? Yeah, it should be. I don't know if these defenses are better. I don't buy it uh, at all. Uh, Washington's played Arizona, Cal, Michigan State, Tulsa, and Boise State, and Oregon, which I, you know, I've talked about they lost Texas Tech, but I think they could have lost that game. Hawaii, Colorado, Stanford. I don't think they played anybody. Question Last the year, caliber of offenses that these two teams have played. Yeah. 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 You know, I think people are looking at Oregon won a little, maybe revenge from last year. Washington went to Oregon and won, you know, and it's right this total, the 37-34. I think the game could be similar. Washington was able to throw it all over Oregon, and Oregon was able to run it all over Washington. 313 yards Oregon had in that game i think we get a good one yeah you know in this uh, you know I, I think we get points could maybe get over if you look at the team totals uh i kind of lean washington you know as long as it's under i get why people see it the three or if you got you know three three and a half you look at oregon this game to be close for some revenge but under a field goal i lean a little bit to to washington here at home 
Yeah, I mentioned that Washington talent. I mean, Bucky Irving at running back for Oregon, Troy Franklin, Tez Johnson, mm. among other, at receiver for Oregon. I mean, they, both teams are just loaded with offensive talent. One thing that might bode well for the over is it does feel like both of these teams at times this year, you know, have 8.1 yards per play for Oregon, which is outstanding uh, on offense, and 8.8 .8 yards per play for Washington on offense, which means, and they're Washington's first in yards per play on offense. Oregon is third, which means mm -hmm. they've had the big play this year. And that's going to help you if you like the over, you know, the potential that both that's teams it. have to create the big play. Uh, we'll see if that does transpire here Saturday. What a great game that should be.